As entrepreneurs and business owners, we're always trying to get that extra competitive advantage. Hey, my name is Blake, and I tried to do that with QR codes, specifically putting QR codes that link back to my YouTube channel in all of my orders. These are all things I sold on eBay, video games, and books. The QR codes, if you saw them from a previous video, were on business cards. I wish I had saved one to show you. I'll put some B-roll from that other video over this right now so you can see what it was. I made them in Canva. It was free to use that. Uh, the business cards cost about 20 cents per business card. I paid 120 bucks for 500 of them. And then I used flow code to create the QR codes and track them again for free. That was pretty cool. I put these business cards that said, hey, thanks for your order. My name is Blake. I appreciate your business with the QR code to my YouTube channel in my orders. On the other side of the card, it said warning, flip this over and scan something just to get their attention. Because personally, if I saw a QR code, I'd ignore it, I think. And the whole idea was can I convert customers into YouTube viewers? Because not only will I make more money off them on YouTube through ad revenue, it'll also hopefully push them back to my eBay store from my videos I make talking about certain hauls, stuff like that. And after a little over a month, the results are in. Now, I did not put QR codes in every single order. If it was a new item, I didn't do that. I feel like if I'm buying a new item, I don't really wanna know who picked it out. That's maybe just me, I'm not sure. I did not put them in any religious items. I thought that if someone's buying a Bible or a Koran or a Talmud, I've sold all those over the past month, uh, I would not want someone's face on that book. If I was especially pious, that could be deemed sacrilegious, so I avoided that. And finally, if it was an international buyer, I didn't include that either because they don't speak English, potentially, and that would be a waste of a QR code. So after a little over a month, the results are in, and I think you're going to be surprised at what happened. I know I certainly was. But first, let's break down the data. So I had 55 scans. I paid 120 bucks total which goes down to $2.18 per view. That's very, very bad. Just to give you context for that, I spent 50 bucks on YouTube ads to see what I could do in comparison to that. I tried to set my daily ad spend at about $17 to hit that 120 in a week, but I didn't realize that YouTube ads convert daily ad spend to monthly ad spend and then apply the total to the remaining days of the month. So after about 24 hours, I'd already spent 49.36 to get 518 views. And I thought that was good enough to have a conclusive result because that's way, way, way more than I got on the QR codes. On YouTube, as opposed to that $2.18 I paid per view, I was paying about nine and a half cents per view, which is like, what, 20 times more than that, 25 times less? That's a huge difference. And on those views, I'd say about one in three of the viewers, because these were targeted ads, they were only targeted towards people who had an interest in reselling, about one in three of them, I think, based on the duration of these views, watched the video. Uh, the average view duration was about three times less than my average view duration of uh, someone who finds the video organically. So I'm just assuming that that means one in three watched it for a few minutes, as opposed to everyone just watching it for a minute and then clicking off. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I think that's a safe extrapolation to make. I also gained four subscribers from this YouTube ad campaign. So for 50 bucks, I got a little over 500 views and four subscribers. And so hopefully those four subscribers will watch more videos and really hopefully out of those 500 views, at least a small portion of them recognize my face and are more willing to watch more of my videos in the future. Again, I don't know, I can't really track that, but that's just me and my marketing mind thinking the way I think people think. This also brings up the question, can I just arbitrage views off YouTube to make money off AdSense? And the answer is no, not off AdSense. If I have a deal with a advertiser who's willing to pay me 15 cents per view, sure, I could do that. That'd be totally doable. But unfortunately, I only get about one and a half cents to two cents per view. So paying 10 cents to earn two cents uh, is not really a good business plan. Yes, I could potentially lower my cost per viewer with a better video, a better thumbnail, but I think getting below five cents per view using YouTube ads to promote my video is still 
pretty difficult. Now there are other advertising platforms out there. Maybe I could arbitrage views off Facebook ads or other third party ad networks. That's outside the scope of this video, but I know some of you are curious about that. So I figured I'd at least touch on the topic. Okay, so we know that <laughs> putting QR codes in your orders is not a good way to get people to go to your YouTube channel, at least not the way I did it. And I think that I did an above average job with the design, with my implementation of this. Am I still going to do this going forward? Now, some of you might say no, but I definitely 100% am. Why am I doing that? One main reason, and that's I had zero negative feedback, zero complaints, uh, and in my opinion, a very good buyer-seller relationship on all the items these QR codes with my face on it went into. I mean, quite honestly, I think that my face being on that creates a more personal connection. It humanizes the buyer-seller relationship, and somebody is a lot less likely to pop off some negative feedback, to say some stupid shit in the messages to me if they know that I'm an actual person and not just some faceless in their mind, customer service rep. And I actually did make a few mistakes on these orders. One of the discs didn't play, one of the discs cracked in transit, the casing of it did, and then there were two or three other returns that easily could have been buyer live returns where they say, oh, it doesn't work, but they chose to say, nah, I changed my mind. Now again, maybe I'm just extrapolating, but to have 500 orders and to have all those orders go smoothly, I don't think it's unfair to attribute at least some of that to my face and the business card in general being in the order. It's also important to note, I didn't get any bad feedback from my QR code being in there. When I posted the original video, someone said, well, I wouldn't like seeing your dumb face in my video game. And I'm thinking, geez, thanks for telling me how you really feel. Uh, and I did kind of worry a little bit that there might be others like that, but hey, it turns out that people are a lot more brazen when they can just anonymously talk to you on the internet via YouTube comments than they are even on eBay, which is saying something. Should you do this? Really, it's up to you. I think if you're a high volume seller and you have a YouTube channel and you do worry about getting these fraudulent returns, it might make sense. It does expose you a little bit personally. Now these strangers know what you look like. But if you're like me and you've got thousands of hours of YouTube videos, that's not a big concern. A further example that I would almost always get a fraudulent return on, I sold somebody a women's large jacket. They messaged me saying, hey, this is a kid's large. I said, no, it's not a kid's large. It's a women's large. I think you're a man. And you just didn't realize that this Paisley LRL Ralph Lauren women's jacket was actually a women's jacket. Uh, and I would always expect that to be a not as described return. However, they just kept it. And part of me really does think that that's because they saw my face in the order and they felt a little bit bad about screwing me over because of a mistake that they made. And yes, it was a mistake they made. It was definitely all over the listing. It was a women's jacket. Going forward, here's what I would do differently. One, I would buy the cards for cheaper. I only bought 500 cards. I bought them off of Canva because it was just easier that way. But I think what I would do next time is take the actual PDF or however the image is saved, upload that to an actual business card printer. I'm not sure who has the best deal. I've always used uprinting.com for this before, but we'll see. I haven't looked. I don't know. Uh, if I can get my card cost down to like a nickel per card and I can buy 2,000 cards, that would be a better deal. I would also link this new QR code I'm putting on these new cards to an unlisted video that is only for buyers. And it would say something like, hey, thanks for buying this for me. I really appreciate your business. You have any issues or problems, please feel free to contact me directly. That would be the best because not only would that provide a better customer experience, it would also allow me more granular tracking on if these QR code scan viewers are converting into subscribers because on an unlisted video, the only people turning into subscribers are ones who scan that QR code. I hope this was helpful for you if you're a business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an eBay reseller, if you're all the above uh, and you're thinking about putting QR codes in your packages because I did and honestly, I did not mind the result. My name is Blake, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment below with what you think I should do next time. See you later.